and your father sit on top of it. So. Hello YouTube, this is a follow up video to my bug out bag basics. This one's the bug out bag contents and I'll go over them in detail. You need a full tang knife, something similar to this knife here, which is a Gerber strong arm. This one is a full tang knife, like I said, and what I mean by that is the blade and the handle are all crafted from one solid piece of steel. You will additionally want to carry a fire steel. That's a ferrocium rod and you strike it with a knife or another 90 degree object to create sparks. You will want to carry a small flashlight like the one I have here has a double A battery as well as a small field sharpener to sharpen your, your blade in the field. Uh, this one has a diamond plate rod as well as a ceramic and carbide sharpener in it. I carry this Leatherman Wave multi-tool. It's useful, it's got pliers as well as other tools that you may find you need in the field. I have a paracord loop that I can put my wrist through on this knife. For another fire starting option, I carry a magnesium fire starter. You may choose to carry a saw like this one. This is a Corona and it's a folding saw. You need to be careful with the teeth. I have cut myself with this one before. I put a Velcro band around it just to make sure it doesn't open, uh, just for safety. Also, you may want to consider a hatchet. Um, I carry this, however, you could just use a survival knife to process firewood, uh, make feather sticks or uh, split kindling. You will need a cooking pot. Uh, this is so that you can boil water, uh, especially if you're in an area where the water needs to be boiled before you can drink it. This one is a Stanley cook kit, and you can get these relatively inexpensively. I choose to carry a small cook stove that runs off of one of those small fuel tanks. Uh, you can fold the legs out around the center portion of this and then put your pot on top of it and uh, cook that way. You can boil water or cook food. Uh, you can get these relatively inexpensively, about $15 or so on Amazon. I have a uh, Ziploc package of salt and pepper. You can use the Ziploc package for other, uh, other needs as well. Uh, package of Kleenex. And then at the bottom, I have a uh, gas cylinder for that stove. It happens to fit conveniently inside the Stanley cook kit. For a second cooking pot, I carry an MSR Alpine Stowaway cook pot, and inside I have an Ohuhu wood-burning stove, just like the one pictured here. With the wood-burning cook stove fitting perfectly inside the MSR cooking pot, this makes an excellent kit for cooking and could actually function as your standalone. You wouldn't have to have a backup cook system. And the nice thing about this is you can just use wood to fire it. Water is one of the priorities of survival and you need to have a way to purify water, whether it be boiling it or through a filtration system. The filtration system pictured here is an early version of the life straw. I carry a write in the rain notepad and pen. Uh, you never know when you want to jot something down, possibly your coordinates or whatnot. I also carry a compass and uh, that's something that you may want to consider carrying as well. Dave Canterbury came up with the five or ten C's of survival, and candle is one of them. Stands for an actual candle or a flashlight. I carry a headlamp. Uh, you'll want to carry some sort of a light source. Another C of survival, container. You'll want to carry some sort of a container, preferably a steel container that you can carry water in. Being a steel container, you'll be able to boil water directly in the container for purification. 
it's a good idea to have a pair of good leather gloves for working around knives or wood or anything that may injure your hands. I choose to carry a sleeping pad for comfort. That's something you may want to consider. In this bag, I have tent stakes and tie outs for the tent, which brings me to my next point, which is another C of survival, cover. You're either going to want a tarp or a tent. I carry this one person backpacking tent, which I actually need to switch out for a two person to accommodate myself and my fiance. Clothing is another form of C for survival. Uh, you want something particularly for your head. Uh, you lose a lot of heat through your head, so I've got a stocking hat. In it, I keep this bug net. Uh, you can put that over your head to protect you from mosquitoes and such. This is like a daisy chain that uh, clips into the backpack, and on it I've got attached different things. I've got a whistle that has a compass. It's a good idea to have a whistle for emergency. Uh, I have another flashlight on here, a mini flashlight. It's always good to have a backup source. There's a saying in survival, one is none and two is one. Uh, if you lose one of something, you've got the other one to back it up. I found these zip pouches on Amazon and they're handy to put your items in. This first one is my first aid kit. And I'm not going to go in detail on that, just carry the standard items that you would need in uh, first aid situations. I do put my map in here. It's a good idea to have a map of the area that you intend to go to. In keeping up with the two is one and one is none concept, you're going to want to have multiple ways of making fire. In this bag, I have jute twine that I soaked in wax. It's a good fire starter. I also carry a small metal pencil sharpener. You can use this with a stick and create your own shavings for fire tinder. I also carry a lighter as well as uh, matches. And you're gonna wanna keep your matches in a waterproof container such as this one uh, to make sure that you keep them dry. In this next container, I have nine millimeter cartridges for my handgun that I do not carry in my bug out bag. I also have batteries for backup for my flashlights as well as paracord. You really need to carry paracord. I recommend at least 100 feet for that. That's your cordage, which is another C of survival. In this bag, I carry a Lansky puck, which is a good sharpening stone for an ax or a hatchet. Inside this gallon freezer bag, I have two cotton bandanas. Cotton bandanas are another C of survival uh, for the cotton. Here I have another map for the area that we may end up in. In this bag I keep my breakfast items, uh, which is oatmeal, there's uh, two packages for each morning, some emergency packets as well as tea, and I have a light my fire spork in here. It's important to remember to rotate your food, uh, check your expiration dates, and r rotate it as needed. You can go ahead and eat the food and then replace it with new food, especially like the oatmeal, uh, since it's out of the box. The other thing that I carry are energy bars. Uh, those are one for each day, and they can get you by for the afternoon between meals. You may want to carry some protein, like this tuna pack that I have here. Uh, it just gives you some additional protein whenever you need it. Uh, the other thing I carry is these Nor packages of food, and those are intended for my lunches, so there's three of them, one for each lunch meal. For dinner meals, you may want to carry Mountain House freeze-dried food, uh, like this one, sweet and sour pork, and then I have Chili Mac. Uh, I also have one other brand that I carry, and uh, that one is a Pad Thai. It gives you some variety, uh, kind of gets you through each day, and gives you something to look forward to that's a little different. As another component of the seas of survival, you're going to want to carry cover in the form of a sleeping bag or a blanket. If you carry a blanket, I recommend that it's a wool blanket. Uh, as you can see, I have a sleeping bag here and it cinches down so you can get it to be a pretty small package for your, uh, your backpack. I hope this video helps you to understand what it is that you need or may want to carry in a 72 hour kit or bug out bag. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.